Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to look at our main topic for today. We're looking at structural failure. And we have reports here by the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing that in 2017 they recorded over 54 cases of building collapse. And this will be the first time in 2012 we had about 33 cases of building collapse in Lagos alone. Now there's so much more that we can, you know, we can look into as to why this keeps happening. Are we not learning from our past mistakes? What can we do to prevent a reoccurrence of these in the future? Now joining us to have these conversations, uh, this conversation today are two architects. We have um, a radio anchor of the Real Estate Show on 99.3 Nigeria Info FM. He's a chartered architect and his name is Architect Benga Muiwa Akinsheta. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. And Hi. joining us as well is um, the Ni General Secretary of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, Lagos, Lagos State, Architect Biodun Fatu. Thank you very much Thank for joining us. Here. So I should ask you, first of all, yeah. about your reaction when you heard of the Itafaji building collapse yesterday. I should start with you, Architect Benga. You know, what, what was the first thing that came to your mind? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really sad and it's, it's something we have to look into and actually uh, uh, reconstruct our perception and the way we do things in this part of the world. It's, it, it's something we have to really make a significant change, right? It's, it, it's sad because it's all about the system. The system, enforcement of laws, uh, regulation, the usual necessary routines, inspections and all, and that's, that's what we actually lack in this part of the world, especially in a growing country like Nigeria, a growing city like Lagos. This is not something we need to, to keep fighting. And it's, it's, it's quite sad that over time we talk about this and with time we go about our business and then when something happens again we pick it up and we start talking. It's, act it's time to actually make a change and correct these problems. Now, yeah. some, unfortunately, we, we had some reports that some eyewitnesses at the scene of the collapse of the building had yeah. stated that this building had been marked twice for demolition, but nothing was done. So mm. I should ask you, mm. why, why do we, how often do we have such incidences and why do you think that the demolition, who, who is to blame for the demolition not having um, ha, had taken place? There, there, there are lo whole, it's a whole lot of um, um, people that we have to look at when it comes to issues like It's a holistic thing. I think it's, it's high time we stop saying that, well, um, the government is to blame mm. or this person is to blame. We mm. all should take responsibilities, right? Um, when the building was marked, I heard that it was marked for, for structural, for the tests, okay. for it to be tested for structural integrity. Mm. I also heard that there was a developer that was commissioned like nine years ago, 2010, for a 10 year lease that is in charge of the building and he got approval for the building to be a residential building. So how come this residential building, after it was approved as a residential building, is now used for a school? And not just so the school, their businesses as well. Business. So it, it's now a commercial mm. building. Yeah. So you ask yourself, okay, if the government has said, oh, it's okay for a four to five family mm. to live in. Let's right. do the maths. Family of five, six, seven, multiply by four. And now we hear that in the, in the floor, there were 100, 100 students, yeah. 100 pupils. The building was not built. So look at the purpose. ratio and the number of people and the people that were, are, are supposed to be using the building. Mm. Okay. You know, that's a problem. So if we look, we have to look at it holistically. If everybody takes a portion of their blame, yeah. this is a wake-up call. The owner of the building? The end users? The end users. The professionals? The planning the governments. Everyone. When you mark the building, you have said it's not habitable. Then mm. you'll evacuate. All right. Yeah. Let's go through the process mm. of getting your building up. So you are a budding landlord in Lagos yes. and you want to put up your, your building. Lead us through the process of getting your building up onto the, you know, the approval for maybe residential purposes. Yeah, uh, in, in summary, you submit, of course, you should ask, the, you should consult the architect and the engineers and the necessary consultant. So you have your, your, your joints that, re that represent the project and then you go to the planning authority to vet. And once it's approved, ideally, it's what has been approved that you should build, but sometimes that's not the case. Most yeah. times. Yes, yeah. <laughs> most times. Yeah, but another important thing we need to look at is most buildings in Lagos, Lagos Island is like the history of 
Lagos. Yeah. So most buildings there are quite old. And a lot of people are not aware that a building has a lifespan of about 60 years. And the, these buildings that, that look so unhealthy and choked up are buildings that, that have been passed from generation to Some generation. Some of them were there before the independence. Exactly. Yeah, post-colonial. And so you don't even know the state. Some, some buildings um, have expired. They are meant to be demolished so that you can erect a new one. Instead, they change the use. They add more floors. They put traders and machines and... So this if I get you correctly, yeah. every building should last a duration of 60 years, after Basically, which it should yeah. probably be demolished and rebuilt be, again. It yeah, should be tested, be tested, and if you need to now, you know, yeah, yeah, bring it up, add to it, do yeah. something to make sure that it's solid. Yeah, from foundation you know? to the rooftop. Uh, unfortunately, being I mm. might say, yeah. the lease in Lagos State mm. is 99 years. years. It's yeah. too long. It's only in Lagos State you get a yeah. lease for a piece of property for 99 years. Really? Sure. After it's which you long... answer the, the yeah. governor. Yeah, so you can renew. Why don't you bring it down to 30 years or 40 years, and then after your lease, there should be a check, yeah. and then you can get another So lease. I guess this is something we never really paid attention to. There, yeah. there are two, there's two contradicting statements. One mm. is saying, the architect is saying that every building has a lifespan of 60 years, yeah. whereas the state is saying that you, know, you can get... You can lease it for 99 years, yes, and after yes. and during that period, the thing has exceeded its life expectancy. Of the, course, we're going to see more the, collapses. The use of the building has changed. The number of occupants have changed. A lot of violations that have not been approved. It's it's a. Series, I mean, people yeah. people who probably started with one floor, by the time they decide to expand their business, of course. God has blessed them. Mm -hmm. They will put two more floors and they will Without the testimony. Without consulting the architect, and you'll be there is, the there is nothing wrong with adding floors. Mm. But do it with the help of the professional. All right, yeah. so what is the procedure for getting maybe a, you, you, is it possible to have gotten property for just maybe a bungalow and then you decide I want to add a few? Yes, of course. It? All so you yeah. need to do is get your drawings to the planning, authority. planning office and you say, this submit. is what I want to do. Mm. And I'm going to add this extra floor. So you pay the extra, they look at it, if it meets with the planning, um, Planning regulations, regulations right there. and then they give you the approval. Right. All right, so we're going to be opening the phone lines mm. for a few minutes before we wrap up this conversation. If you have questions, comments, contributions, we're looking at structural collapse of buildings in Nigeria, not just in Lagos State. As we recorded that in 2012, we had 33 building collapses in Lagos State and 20 in Abuja. This happens all around the country, but we need to ensure that we educate people. Many people, I'm sure, do not know that mm. buildings have a lifespan, yeah, just expire. like ev almost yeah. everything else you buy products on the counter you know yeah. on the supermarket yeah. and there's the expiry date so buildings have an expiry date exactly, and after exactly. 60 years you should start reevaluating. Right. you know what needs to be done to the building so we right. need to get this information right. out there let's talk about building materials with substandard goods which right. happens to be the norm you know i'd start with lagos state there have right. been buildings where you move into it's a brand new apartment but in one month everything is getting bad the toilet pipes are blocked. You know, you, you start getting a plumber before you know you're seeing cracks on the wall. Mm -hmm. How do we regulate um, the building process to ensure that quality materials are being used? That's, that's why we say everyone is involved, right? The owner of the house, even if he's far from a building consultant, should be involved. You should be aware of what's going on. Because most of the time, the third stage of a project goes to the, uh, the, the contractor who they say is just a businessman. So a lot of times the architect is not involved, right? So the most important thing is that the client should be aware. You should know where you should source your materials from. from. You should actually supervise these things and you should follow up. Due diligence is key. There are brand names out there that are certified, right, for purchase. So the whole attitude of you don't have money, you want to cut cost. This is the problem. Yeah, and yeah. to add to what he said, architects are specifiers. And they also, when we do a design, we tell you, this is what I saw, mm. this is what I imagined, mm -hmm. or this is what I wanted to put, right. that we have agreed. If you are my client, for instance, and you like to have wooden floors, and I say, oh, put so, so, so type of wooden floor, mm -hmm. because I know the quality and the, the, the duration it will take yeah. for it to start wearing off. This is what I've specified for you, for your interior. You can now go ahead, right, as a client, and, and your contractor tells you, oh, I can get this cheaper for you, mm. you know, from China yeah, that cheaper, or something. Cheaper thing, just and then you're like, oh, yeah, fine, let me get it, save some extra change. 
then you become penny wise, pound foolish. Yeah. And um, you look at it again, we have standard organization of Nigeria that mm. looks at the quality of these things. For instance, our cement, there's cement meant for casting concrete, mm. there's cement meant for screeding, mm. but people don't know all yeah, this information. Yeah, yeah. So the, the contractor just knows that, oh, this cement is probably cheaper than this one, yeah. and he picks it up. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so how effective so, as well would you say that the standard organization of Nigeria is with regards to ensuring that they, they um, cross certify, check and yeah. they certify mm. the durability of certain products and, the, and, and how original they are? Because some people don't even know that standard organization of Nigeria works. They just, like you mentioned, they could just go look for the cheaper option and they purchase yeah. off no, the counter. They, they work, but yeah. you know, it's, yeah. the onus is also on... The, the the buyer or let me say the, due diligence the contractor yes. to check that there is yeah. a certification exactly. on this product mm. that you are buying you know um nigeria is what it is and it's our country we need to love it and try and improve it all right let's look yeah. at some of the lessons we need to have learned from the past collapses that i've experienced i'll yeah. ask you both what are some of the things we need to learn to ensure that we don't see a repeat incidence of this, God forbid. Yeah. But no matter yeah. how many times I say God forbid, if we don't put action, exactly. we would exactly see you know, situations like this. We will mourn over this, cry over this, get over it. And yeah. in a few months or another a few years, another gone. one will happen. Yeah. So what lessons do we need to have learned from all the past um, collapses that have happened to ensure that we don't see this happening again? There, like I said before, there has to be absolute enforcement from the respective authorities. They have to follow up, they have to have records of every development within the, the local government they cover, and they have to understand the present state of the building. They have to be aware. They have to be aware. We, they, they have to be out there in the nooks and crannies. You don't build and they come, oh, when did you build? No, they have to be aware. They have to know what's going on. In addition to that, don't you think that some people should actually spend Years cooling off in jail. So, for example, right. with the Itafaji building uh, yeah. collapse, yeah. many people have lost things that even if you send certain people to jail, you will never be able to bring. I mean, I heard yeah. that a parent lost four children in, right. in the building collapse. Yeah. Many people have died. You know, some people are struggling for their lives in hospitals. But somebody has to carry the blame for this thing. Some people have to go behind bars, don't you think? You're, you're talking about the owner of the build, building. You're talking about the proprietor, Antiesta or something, of the school. Right. You, you wonder, is this school accredited by the Ministry of Education, for example? How, how, how did a school, how did you choke a school within some floors to put kids? You know, the, the, the level of corruption, incompetence, and irresponsibility of the system has literally collapsed on the future of Nigerians. It's really sad. It's All really right. sad. It's really sad. So we need to, we need to ensure that we yeah. have these people thrown behind bars because this won't be the first yeah, time. In fact, there, there has been, been several example. cases yeah. in Nigeria. We make a lot of noise about the collapse and then, you know, we hear, oh, they are going to court and after a while, it, nothing, it's, we don't hear anything history. about it yeah. again. So now let's talk about, you mentioned earlier that everybody has a role to play, mm. the government, the individuals. Yeah. Yeah. So can you please analyze some of the rules, rules of the government, rules of the individuals that own these buildings uh. and rules of even we tenants that don't own these buildings yeah. as well? Okay, um, First, first, firstly, I would say the government needs to protect the prote professionals because we cannot enforce without the government coming to enforce that mm -hmm. a professional must be on your project. Mm. Now, we as Nigerians of Architects have been giving proposals to the government. We have a proposal right now that we're still giving to the state government to involve professionals in all aspects of construction. Right. That's from the first stage to the construction and to the end when the end user will move in and start using the products. Right, right. Now, um, if we get that protection, if they start enforcing these codes mm -hmm. such that if we come to your site and we notice that your supervising architect is not aware or is not properly involved in construction, yeah. then there's a problem. Okay. Once we can get that protection from the government, I think it will be easier for us to do our jobs. Yes. They want because to look at the as well. I will get there now. Look at the number of buildings we have in Nigeria. Mm. In, in Lagos alone, going on, let's look at how widespread the buildings are fast coming up. Look at Ikorodu. I drove through Ikorodu recently and I was like, wow, I can't even recognize anywhere anymore. Mm. You know, the way buildings are being brought up. And I asked myself, if, every profession, if we professionals are involved yeah. with all this, mm -hmm. then I think the profession will be more, more yes. will be better. It's because of the shortcuts. You know? Yeah. There's that's, so many shortcuts, yeah. so we need to block those gaps and, and make sure that they pass it through the right channel. All right. And um, for the 
for the end users, the, yeah. the, the house owners, mm. it will be unfortunate for you to rely on one artisan mm -hmm. to, to interpret what a professional has put down for you. Yeah. A professional structure engineer has said these are the number of fillers we we'll use, yeah. and then you listen to a, a, mis a, a, a misery that cuts says, the cost, "Oh, you know? we can do eight. Mm. There's a problem. Mm. It means that you are not properly educated, if I may put it that way. Right. So there should be also be awareness to them that look, you are risking your life. Mm -hmm. It's like a doctor has prescribed something to you, and you say, "Oh no, I'm not going to take this medication. I'm going to take this." Yeah. Shouldn't we also? involve the tenants, if I may put it that way, or people who do not own these properties, to, if I may use the word snitch, but snitch for our benefit. So you see an yeah, apartment there be whistle that blowing was, exactly, for, I was going to ask if the whistleblowing for, policy for would apply buildings. here. So you come and say, <laughs> right. oh, there's this building at Lagos Island yeah. that we has been marked for demolition, yeah. but people are still living there. Right. And you report, shouldn't we be encouraged? Because we don't, we seem to have a close knit society where everybody feels like, ah, don't go and report so that they will not say you are the one that yeah, outed but, them. You know, I've actually had a number of situations people call on the show and they say, oh, there's this building, it's tilting, it's cracking. Mm. People tweet and all. It all boils down to enforcement yeah. because people actually talk. People go to the Lagos State Building Control Agency. Mm -hmm. They report. Like, the building was marked already. So what happened? And we, they, we have, um, there's, a, there's a body of all professionals yeah. called the Building Collapse Prevention Guild mm. where we professionals who are encouraged to whistleblow through that um, platform. platform yeah. But I think it should also be um, encouraged, extended, to, extended to everybody. All right, so maybe exactly. I should actually ask Some you your way. social media handle. So if there's somebody watching, and you know of a building that is, you know, not properly situated, or like in Nigerian terms, Tony Onion, how can people <laughs> reach you with, via social media? Well, we, our institute is on, is on Instagram yeah. and Facebook on Instagram. at yeah. NIA Lagos. Lagos. All right. right, so at NIA Lagos, if you know any building, you, you want to subject your building to a test to know if it's, beyond the 60-year test and if it's, you know, if it can last a little more longer. Mm -hmm. And if you know any other building that is cracking, what you're doing is you're not snitching, you're saving the lives of the people who are living in that building. At NIA Lagos is the handle on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram, Instagram. as well. Yes. Right, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's been right, a delight yeah, to have you. And our thoughts and prayers are with as many that yeah. were affected by the recent collapse in Etafaji. We still have updates on that so far. We heard that there are no new cases of deaths yet, but we hope that at the end of the day, we'll be able to save as many as we can, rescue right. as many as we can, and that those who are struggling for their lives will find their healing um, completely and perfect. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.